And now... Miss Agnes Moorhead in Death and Miss Turner. A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. We went out for a walk this morning. I was dead and I went out for a walk. Miss Briggs went with me. It was her idea. I wouldn't have particularly thought of it. She'd brought the new picture in this morning. She took my chair and stood on it and took off one shoe and hammered the nail in the wall and hung the picture up. She asked me if it was hanging straight and I said I thought so. Then she said, well... She took off her glasses and gave me a little inquiring expression. She always does that after she's done something for me. She wants my approval. So I looked at the picture hanging there. And I smiled and I said, It's lovely. A plain black frame. Yes, you're right. That's just the right frame for it. There are some other pictures downstairs we could have framed if you like. That would be a lot of trouble, wouldn't it? Not a bit. I think I could see some more. There's a headache just hovering over me. I don't want to wait until it gets me. Of course, you finish your nap. You know what might be nice, though, later on? To go for a stroll in the park. Go out today and have lunch somewhere nice. Like 96 Piccadilly or Claridon? How about it, Rachel? <laughs> I was dead. Long, long dead. And I went out for a walk. My name is Rachel. Yes, I can't see any doubt about that. No. And then the American meets the Englishman and says, Well, how are things here, old boy? And the Englishman says, Better than next year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are you getting tired, dear? Mm-hmm. Seen enough of London for one day? Oh, no, no. I'm enjoying this so very much. As long as we don't walk too far. We're not, are we? No, no. It's lovely. How long have you been in London, Rachel? You know I can't tell you that, Miss Briggs. Of course. I've forgotten. You're just hoping that I... Just might let something sort of slip accidentally. Aren't you, Miss Reed? Yes, I guess so. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? No. No, it wouldn't. Don't count on it, Miss Reed. It's not going to happen. I can't risk it. Very well, my dear. Oh, look. Here's the frame shop where I got our new picture done. Mm. The black frame you like so much. He's framing some more for us. Let's just go in and see how he's coming along. Is this a new shop? Yes, I think so. Hello there. Anybody in? Who's that? Uh, oh, oh, Miss Briggs. Uh, and how are we today? Oh, fine, thank you, Mr. Putney. My friend here and I thought we'd just look in and see how our little job of work is going. I see, I see. <laughs> uh, that was uh, the four oils. By who was it? A uh, uh, Turner, that's it, Turner. Let me see. Oh, no, I'm afraid we haven't got to them yet. They're still hanging up there on the line. I've been here before. I beg your pardon? It was the same. Well, I'm afraid not. You see... What do you mean? I tell you, I well, don't... Well, I've only just opened my shop a few weeks ago. I'm not talking about your shop, Mr. Putney. But these paintings... Oh, these paintings. Oh, I don't know. Miss Briggs brought them in. Uh, by Turner. Turner? That's the thought. J.M. Turner? Why, well, these have nothing to do with him. In the first place, he was watercolor... In the second place, landscape. In the third well, place... Well, not J.M. Turner. Another Turner. Uh, they signed... Uh, R. Turner. Oh. Interesting painter, don't you think? Not exactly macabre, but something shivery about them. 
All fallen seem to have an... Well, I guess you'd call it an ominous overtone. Really? I don't feel that particularly. <laughs> well, wouldn't you call it a little nightmarish when a painter goes to this much trouble? All this detail of painting a man in his hand, his suit, the handkerchief in his pocket, uh, the carnation in his buttonhole, and then leaves out his face in all four paintings. No face. I see a face. Uh, oh, yes, of course. Not complete. Not the filled in features. But the, the qualities of this man's face are there for me, even though they're not there for you. I should know this man if I met him. I think he's going to be getting back. He's dead, I think. We rode back in a taxi, Miss Briggs and I. She had a bundle which Mr. Putney said she'd ordered or something. I wasn't listening to them. Every time I opened my mouth to say something, I gave them an advantage. Every time I went out for a walk, like today, I showed things in my expression that told them what they wanted to know. I'd fallen into a trap when Miss Briggs had suggested that walk this morning. They'd been weak. I should never have gone. I want to be dead. And I won't be brought back from it. No, wasn't that a pleasant outing? Yes. Yes. What have you got in that bundle? This? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Stuff I ordered the other day from Mr. Putney. Oh? What is it? You laugh. No, I won't. Well, I know it's foolish, but... Well, anyway, it's something I've always wanted to have a private dabble at. They say it relaxes the nerves. And who knows? I'm younger than Grandma Moses. Paint. You bought a box of paint. And brushes. This one, if you please, costs two guineas. It's for the fine detail work, he said. Sable. Hmm? It's a sable brush. And these, you mix your colors on there. Palette. And then there's, uh, whatever this is, fixative and... Well, anyway, I've gone and got a perfect smasher of a real professional kit. Now, if someone will teach me to draw a straight line... You didn't buy this box of paints for yourself. Did you, Miss Bree? But whatever You bought them for me. That's it, isn't it? I was a painter. That's what you're waiting for me to find out, isn't it? Ah, Turner. The painter who does portraits of a man without a face. It's Rachel Turner. Is that it? I don't remember it, but is that it? Am I Rachel Turner? Uh, wait here. I've got to get Dr. Price. I looked at the door a moment after she had gone. And a square of white became the only thing in the room. I picked up a canvas. I drew a chair forward and propped the canvas against it. I was doing my best not to think, not to govern my actions, simply to allow whatever might happen. My hand was tearing away the cellophane wrapper from the charcoal. I leaned over the square of white propped there on the chair. And like plunging a dagger into a white body... I invaded the purity of the canvas with a bold and perfectly symmetrical oval in black. Done with one stroke. The charcoal fell from my hand. Now the oils were spurting onto the palette. The sable brush, stabbing into the color, blending them, testing the mixture. Perfect flesh tone. Ah. For what thing? And then there was a roaring in my ears. Here is the doctor. The doctor? Well, we meet at last. I mean to say we, we meet as people meet in a drawing room. A cocktail party, perhaps, where the hostess hasn't had time to introduce us all around, and, and we find ourselves, you and I, elbow to elbow at the punch bowl. In this moment, you smile to me as I hand you your glass, and, and I say my name is Grace. I'm Rachel Turner. I'm a painter. Who are you? You know, that's a subject on which I'm dreadfully ill-informed. I'm a psychologist myself. Sir Barclay Grant, of the Majesty's College of Medicine. Good heavens. Not only a painter, but a positive encyclopedist. How would you know that? Have we met before? We've not met at all this way. We don't meet, you and I, Sir Barclay. 
until some months from now when you are my doctor and I'm a patient who has lost her memory. How much do you know now, Miss Tenner? We're going to be sorry. More than that, you'll be the object of all the murderous hatred my soul is capable of if you persist in bringing me back. I shall risk that. Many people hate me. I say many others will be hated. Miss Turner, did you paint this picture uh, just now? In those 15 minutes while Miss Briggs and I were talking? <laughs> yes. It's remarkable. Amazing. Uh, this man's face. Why him? I mean, for what reason this particular encounter? Is he real from life? Yes. Yes. What's his name, then? Who is he? I don't know. I don't know. I I saw him only once. Then why did you feel compelled to bring it back to his face? To show to yourself again now? Why? I... It's... It's the face of the man I murdered. In a moment, we continue with... Suspense. We continue with... Death and Miss Turner, starring Miss Agnes Moorhead. A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. You murdered this man whose face you painted, Joe? Yes. Yes, I did. How did you murder him? Oh, I don't know. You have no, no recollection of having actually done it? No. You're unable to tell yourself where this happened or when? No. I... I only am sure that I killed him. And Miss Turner, we are going to give you something to make you sleep. sleep. Now, would you roll up your sleeve for Miss Briggs? Oh, dear. Yes, we shall need to help you to sleep for a period of time now. I hope it will be a brief period. You've wanted to sleep a great deal of recent months, haven't you? <laughs> Yes, that was because you were afraid of reality, of your thoughts while awake. So you were always dozing off or taking a nap or, or staying in bed till half the day was gone. No. No, I know I'm a murderer. I've earned the right to be drugged into forgetting it for a few hours. I was already dead. I'd forgotten. Why couldn't I have been allowed to die? Why not have hung me and be done with it? Hung you? <laughs> hung you for what? For a murder you cannot describe? Of a man whose death and circumstances pointing to violence we have no record of? No one on earth has come forward to accuse you of any crime. How did you find me? What was I doing? Where was I when you found me? You must remember what's happened yourself. You must live through that horror again. Only then will you know what is true. In the meantime, I shall help you in every way I can. Hate me if you like. It's better than hating yourself. Good night, Miss Turner. So many years to remember. A life brought back to be my own. The figures and landscapes and people which belonged to me. When nothing had been mine the day before. It was all there. Up until my birthday. What happened on the 16th of April? I remember the night before. It was the last thing I remembered until awaking here in the hospital on the first day of May. I was standing in the lobby of the hotel just having got off that rickety elevator. And my bag was packed, was there at my feet. And the porter came around from behind his booth and handed me my train ticket. After that, nothing. Black. White. Piano. Soon. Train. Teach. Barrister. Solicitor. Pallet. Paint. Porter. Ticket. 
Mm-hmm. Clean. Uh, Snow White? Uh, I beg your pardon? Snow White. She has that long train that the dwarf carries. Oh, yes. Quite right. Blood. Red. Train. A sword. Miss Turner, have you noticed anything about your response to this word? Which word, Doctor? The word train. I have put it to you three times. And each time you have, for some reason, avoided connoting what one should expect to be the most commonplace association. You have not answered with smoke or wheels or Waterloo Station or underground. Have you any idea why you should be unwilling to recognize the word train as a high-speed conveyance traveling on rails? I... I, I, I don't have any idea. Book. Dealer. Yorkshire. Pudding. Train. Rack. Thank you, Miss Turner. I think that will do us for today. Miss Briggs took me back to my room. I was in a fever. I could hardly walk straight. She kept dabbing in my forehead with her handkerchief, but it didn't do any good. I could see her lips moving, probably asking me if I was all right and she could help me. But I couldn't hear her. There was another horrifying, terrible sound filling my ears. I held my hands over them, trying to... Oh, it grew louder. In my room, Miss Briggs tried to push me toward the bed. I could see her lips framing, you must fly down. And I pressed her out of the way and lunged for the candle. My hands and arms were numb, but so they were floating, out of my control. Except that they ached agonizingly. There were flashes before my eyes. Pounding waves that threw my head back and forth as though I were being battered in some apocalyptic storm. <laughs> then came a frightful shrieking, torn from the throat of a damned soul in torment. And I fell forward on the floor and something fell with me. And I saw it as the picture I'd painted. And the voice that was shrieking was my own. This is it, is it, nurse? Oh, yes, yes. It's all, all right. right. Roll up that sleeve. Yes, now, Rachel. She painted that picture there, delirious, like a mad woman. I... Yes, yes, yes. Be quiet. Now, Miss Turner. Oh. Oh. oh, you hurt me. You hurt me this time. It's stinging. Oh. The mixture's a little bit different this time, Miss Turner. It will stop hitting in just a moment. There, it's better already, isn't it? Oh, yes. This is warm. Peaceful. This picture you've just done, Miss Turner. Is it good? I think it's extraordinarily good. Are you sleeping? Sleeping? But awake. Asleep, but not asleep. Could you describe this picture to me as though I'd never seen it? A man sitting in a railway compartment, looking out the window of a train. Opposite him, with her back to us, is a woman. It is as though we were the woman whose attention is on this man. As though we were this woman? Yes. Don't you mean that you are this woman, Miss Turner? Yes, I am. What day is it now? My birthday. April the 16th, last April. Yes, that is the day. I'm aboard the Flying Scotsman. I'm on my way to Edinburgh to paint the moors. I'm in a compartment, alone. I'm relaxed and happy. I feel the urge to paint something. Right here as the train goes speeding along. And what do you paint? A man. That is the embodiment of a man. His posture. His clothes. And for some reason I cannot paint his face. I know his face. But I find it impossible to transfer it to the canvas. I make four separate versions of him. But each time my brush remains poised in midair, 
refusing to invade the Oval of White where the face should be. At Manchester, I get out to stretch my legs, walking up and down the station platform. And when I resume my compartment, I find that I have a fellow traveler sharing it with me. As I seat myself opposite him, he turns to face me directly. He is the man. It's his face which is missing from the portraits that lie on the seat beside me. How do you do? How do you do? I... How do you do? What is it, miss? Do you, do you feel unwell? Forgive me for staring at you. I, I didn't... I mean, looking at you in this way. <laughs> it's all right, if you like. I'm a painter, you see. Artist? Oh, jolly good, an artist. And um, well, this is the impossible part. Here, you, you see these pictures? Hmm? Oh, oh, yes. Yes, very interesting. Uh, not to know who it is, his face. Oh, but I do know. I didn't feel I could do the face before, but now I can. Oh, uh, 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 oh, of course. Why? Because it's your face. My face? <laughs> Why my face? Yes. I know it sounds queer, but... You're, you're going to put my face in there? Yes, if <laughs> I may. Well, well, all right. All right, go right ahead. You mean it? No. Oh, certainly. Uh, uh, now, now, what do I do? Do I uh, just uh, sit here? Yes, yes, just that way. Please, if you tilt your head just a little more that way. Oh, is this all right? Yes. You're in the shadow, though. There's only a little more light. Oh, I have it. Would it be too much trouble if we change places? There's good light here where I'm sitting. No, I beg pardon? If we change places, I'll sit over there and you... Oh, will... oh, yes, yes, change places. Oh, certainly. I sit down where he's been. And he places himself exactly where I've been sitting. For a moment, he looks at me, smiling. And then it happens. There's a grinding, crashing thunder. Smoke and steam obscured his face, still smiling and surprised. And then, an inferno of glittering wood and glass and rending steel came screaming at him. And the car split in two and flames engulfed him, shrieking at death. I did him. He changed places with me. It was I who was meant to die to first me. Now that you remember, you've come back, back to the edge of madness. I'm going home now. My train leaves at midnight. He gave me a farewell tea this afternoon, and I even had a cocktail. The hostess was much too busy to introduce us all around, but a very nice gentleman came up to me and introduced himself. My name is Grice. I'm a psychologist. I am Rachel Turner. I'm a painter. <laughs> Agnes Moorhead starred in Death and Miss Turner, written especially for her by William Spear and produced and directed by William N. Robeson. Supporting Miss Moorhead in Death and Miss Turner were Irene Tedrow, Raymond Lawrence, John White, and Richard Peel. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense.